Karl Marx called him the most splendid fellow in ancient history. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 greatest warriors who ever lived. All later emperors took his name. From that moment on, Caesar wasn't just a surname anymore, it became synonymous with leader. For this list, we're looking at the fighters, soldiers, and generals who displayed the greatest skills in conquest and on the battlefield. If there's a warrior whose absence from our list you're feeling combative about, put up your dukes in the comments. Number 10. Richard the Lionheart It's arguable that Richard I wasn't a good king. After all, he only reigned for 10 years, of which he spent maybe six months in England. Most of his efforts were devoted towards funding the Third Crusade. But the things that made him a bad ruler made him a great warrior. His skill and determination in battle were legendary. One anecdote holds that Richard used a crossbow to pick off guards on a wall while ill and carried on a stretcher. No wonder he got nicknames like Lionheart. Richard's heroic deeds would one day earn him the title, Lionheart. Although the Third Crusade proved unsuccessful, Richard's bravery abroad and in his own lands, which included much of France, helped secure his legacy. At just 41 years of age, Richard the Lionheart is killed by a bolt fired from an enemy's crossbow. He leaves no legitimate heirs. Number 9. Hannibal Hannibal the Carthaginian was one of the greatest generals the world has seen. No one before or after him could take on and defeat the Roman legions with such contemptuous ease. This Carthaginian general gave Rome a run for its money. Widely regarded as one of the greatest military leaders in antiquity, Hannibal had everything a good general should have. Charisma among his men, curiosity about his foes and the environment, a brilliant tactical mind, and plenty of daring. We will be victorious! His crossing of the Alps in 218 BC wasn't just incredible because he brought elephants with him. Hannibal organized it during a time when there weren't reliable maps. He outthought and outmaneuvered the Roman superior forces on their home territory for nearly 20 years, and basically financed the war himself. Carthage may have lost eventually, but Hannibal didn't make it easy for Rome, and history has remembered him for it. He was the man with an extraordinary gift for battle, who proved his military genius at Cannae. He was the man who came closer than anyone to defeating the Roman Republic. But in the end, he couldn't stop it from becoming an empire. Number 8. Attila the Hun Even today, the name Attila the Hun is a synonym for savagery. Speaking of scourges of Rome, one of the Western and Eastern Empire's most deadly foes was Attila the Hun. With one exception, Attila was undefeated in battle. His nomadic empire stretched across most of Eastern Europe. He plagued the Eastern Roman Empire through repeated attacks, demanding tribute to cease his depredations and then breaking his treaties when it suited him. He's a mysterious figure, he's an unknown quantity to the Romans, and they don't know what his intentions are. He also ravaged most of the Western Roman Empire, devastating their outlying provinces and most of Italy. Attila enjoyed these apocalyptic scenes. He would roll his eyes in delight at the terror he inspired. He conquered more than a hundred cities. There was so much loss of life that no one could count the dead. While he may not have destroyed either of the Roman empires outright, he certainly brought both of them to their knees and sowed the seeds for their eventual defeats. But even though his empire was short-lived, Attila achieved something far greater, immortality. After all, who has not heard of the name Attila? The Hun. Number 7. King Leonidas I This legendary warrior king is more than just the memes. This is Sparta! Leonidas was king of the Greek city-state Sparta during the 5th century BCE. Although most kings were not trained in Sparta's rigorous testing methods, Leonidas was not expected to inherit the throne, and so was instructed as a warrior from a young age. And inherit he did, with Leonidas going on to lead an alliance of Greeks at the Battle of Thermopylae. Leonidas was Sparta's superhero, the king who, with 300 warriors, made a doomed last stand against the might of Persia. Along with his famous 300 Spartan hoplites, 
Leonidas commanded a force of roughly 7,000 Greeks against anywhere between 10 and 42 times that number of Persian soldiers. For three days, the Greeks held off the Persian advance, sheltering behind their wall and then counterattacking in hoplite formation. The king may have fallen in this famous battle, but his deeds have lasted millennia. Number 6. Spartacus Of all the warriors who challenged Rome, Spartacus is arguably the most famous. An enslaved soldier turned gladiator, Spartacus famously escaped bondage with his fellow gladiators to form a massive rebellion against the Roman Republic in the first century BCE. Spartacus and 70 other gladiators broke out of the Capua Ludus. This band of runaways, roaming through these very hills and woods in southern Italy, would soon become a rebel army. While most of those under his command were untrained, Spartacus emerged victorious time and time again thanks to unconventional tactics and daring attacks. In Spartacus, I think we're talking about a, a true leader. He has that ability to understand um, strategy rather than tactics. It's off the battlefield stuff as well as on the battlefield stuff. On one occasion, he even had his men use ropes made from vines to descend Mount Vesuvius and flank enemy forces. While Spartacus may have been defeated after his armies became too unwieldy to direct, his legacy as a warrior and liberator has echoed through the ages. Spartacus' achievement must be that we're still talking about him. He's part of the story of human hope, of human effort, of trying against all the odds to succeed, and he's an image that a brave man can put up a good fight. Number five, Vlad the Impaler. The story goes that Romania's bottomless well of tyranny, catastrophe, and overall human misery can all be traced back to one terrifying ruler and his supernatural evil. Vlad III, also known as Vlad Dracula, ruled Wallachia, modern-day Romania, in the 15th century. Downright infamous for how vicious he could be to his enemies, Vlad the Impaler got his name through his preferred form of execution and torture. To this day, he's still referred to as Vlad Tepes, Vlad the Impaler, in memory of his favorite method of killing. His reputation for cruelty influenced Dracula and other legends of vampires. So Gavin, what's the connection between the historical story of Vlad the Impaler and the story that Bram Stoker gave us of Count Dracula? He's decided to write a book about vampires. So he picked up a guidebook on Transylvania and he found this name, Dracula and it just sounded so evocative. Vlad was also a formidable warrior and leader. He repelled Ottoman incursions into Europe numerous times. His night raid on Tergoviste saw him dress his men as Turks and infiltrate their camp, sowing confusion and leading his foes to attack themselves. While there's no denying he was a sadistic despot, Vlad the Impaler was effective on the battlefield. With Vlad, we have a man who didn't care how much blood he spilt. Finally, we have the name. Dracula. Today, it has a deadly sound to it. It means son of the devil. The devil, of course, a horrific, vengeful, impossible to stop creature. And that is exactly the image that we have from the real Vlad Dracula. Number four, Julius Caesar. One of the most famous men in history, Gaius Julius Caesar is also one of the most celebrated generals. Caesar may have been unsuccessful in conquering Britannia, but his conquest of Gaul, modern France, helped make him popular and influential. His conquest of Gaul and then of the Roman state itself changed the face of Western civilization. His charisma brought him incredible loyalty among his men, and his swift, decisive actions on the battlefield often led to success. In the Gallic Wars, Caesar shows himself to be an absolutely brilliant commander and an inspired leader of men always in the front line, always making sure to ride harder and faster, to be there first, to carry heavier loads than anyone else. He even wrote books about his own campaigns. Caesar rode the wave of his success to become Rome's first dictator. And while he famously met his end in the Senate, Caesar's accomplishments were nevertheless titanic. Not only in Roman times, the terms Tsar and Kaiser go back to, you've guessed it, Caesar. And leaders ever since have done more than just take his name. For good or bad, they have used the template he created to ground their own rule, even now. Number three, Miyamoto Musashi. There are many legendary samurai in Japan's history, but they all pale in comparison to Miyamoto Musashi. 
Miyamoto was basically the archetypal lone samurai warrior or ronin. He developed his own style of swordsmanship, Niten Ichiryu, which utilizes two swords. Miyamoto also authored books on his life and philosophy and created artwork. A legendary swordsman, Miyamoto Musashi, would preserve the way of the samurai in a classic book, The Five Rings. It was a guide to strategy, its philosophy embraced in Japan even to this day. But he's most renowned for his incredible prowess in battle, fighting 61 duels in his life and losing none of them. Not only was he skilled with swords, but Miyamoto also manipulated his opponents, arriving late to make them angry and prone to mistakes. <laughs> Miyamoto Musashi continues to inspire to this day through both his teachings and his deeds. Number 2. Genghis Khan in the list of the greatest conquerors in history, Genghis Khan might be the most successful. He rose from abject poverty to rule most of the known world. It is claimed that one in every 200 men alive today is descended from him. By the time of his death, most of Central Asia was under Mongol rule. Genghis's innovations in organization helped make his troops more effective. You can hit them with arrows and they just keep on coming, like an army of zombies. His cavalry could fire arrows from horseback. He used terror tactics to force his enemies to capitulate. It was like swatting flies. A fixed standing army didn't know where they came from and they didn't know where they went. It was impossible to fight because they didn't stand to engage. But Genghis also organized his empire as a meritocracy, with success and skill providing advancement rather than blood. Through such strategies, Genghis Khan destroyed entire empires and left millions dead in his wake. Many of his deeds were monstrous but he was undeniably powerful. This and his undoubted military genius enabled him to conquer vast territories stretching from the Pacific to the heart of Europe and from northern Siberia to India, Iran, and Turkey. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Sir William Wallace, a major leader for Scottish independence. Wallace is not just an icon for political change. His name is even remembered on the map of Scotland itself. Saladin. This famed Muslim military leader stopped Richard I in his tracks. As liberator of Jerusalem, Saladin guaranteed his place in history. But it was his treatment of the Christian population that would make him a legend. Sun Tzu. The Chinese general literally wrote the book on war. Sun Tzu is important because he has a cohesive, holistic philosophy of how to approach strategy. If you listen to Sun Tzu, if you follow his principles, you will be victorious. Joan of Arc, a teenage girl managed to become one of France's greatest heroes. In the 19th century, when interest in her reached a peak, this aspect of her life fascinated the artists and sculptors of the time. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Alexander the Great Alexander III of Macedon not only set the bar for Alexanders, but he also did so for warriors. He was admired by many of the entries on our list, including Julius Caesar and Hannibal. Alexander the Man was a complex, at times contradictory figure, capable of incredible generosity and savage cruelty. He would plan a campaign in meticulous detail and then risk everything on a do-or-die charge. The larger-than-life warrior set out to and achieved the conquest of the seemingly invincible Persian Empire. Some things that helped Alexander become so successful were his incorporation of local customs and recruitment as he conquered, as well as hammer and anvil tactics in battle. For over 2,000 years, he has remained the first and foremost of the great commanders. By the time of his death at age 32, Alexander the Great was undefeated in battle and had established an empire that spanned from Greece to India. His infallible record, meteoric rise, and impact on the world have cemented him as history's greatest warrior. The death of Alexander the Great brings to a close a conquest never again equaled by any warrior at any time in history. Did you enjoy this video? 
check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.